हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आई हेलो एवरीवन हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आई निशा प्रत्युषा ऋतुजा लीला माहिर विष्णु गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू आई सो एज यूजुअल आई एम बैक विथ द इंग्लिश वर्जन ऑफ क्वांटम केमिस्ट्री और राइट एंड इन दिस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू आर फोर ए इन टू द बेसिक्स ऑफ केमिस्ट्री विच इज क्वांटम केमिस्ट्री एंड आई एम श्योर दैट ऑल ऑफ यू विल अग्री दैट वी आर लर्निंग क्वांटम केमिस्ट्री इन सच अ वे दैट इट विल स्टॉप फीलिंग दैट इट्स डिफिकल्ट इट्स अ डिफिकल्ट टॉपिक इफ इट्स अ चैलेंजिंग टॉपिक आई एम श्योर दैट नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू आर स्टार्टिंग टू गेन कॉन्फिडेंस दैट क्वांटम केमिस्ट्री मस्ट बी अ वेरी सिंपल टॉपिक इट कैन नॉट बी अ वेरी टफ टॉपिक एज यू हैव ऑलरेडी ऑलवेज हर्ड quantum chemistry is a very simple topic okay and that's what we are going to uh, try to understand here for csir net gate and uh, set exams quantum chemistry is one of the most scoring subjects if you understand the basics very well and that's what we are going to cover here all right so good evening uh, bhavana good evening leela all right uh, so uh, i'll brief uh, you what we are <coughs> what we are what we have already discussed what we have done is we have so far discussed uh, classical versus quantum mechanics in which we discuss that classical mechanics talks about a trajectory and classical mechanics tells us that uh, if we know the position right now or if we know certain values right now we can predict what the values will be maybe 10 minutes from now or even 2 years from now okay but in quantum mechanics that can become a challenge because in quantum mechanics uh, there is an uncertainty involved okay there is an uncertainty principle involved uh, which uh, dr heisenberg had proposed all right and what was the heisenberg uncertainty principle if you remember what was the heisenberg uncertainty principle do you remember i'm sure that you do the heisenberg uncertainty principle was delta x into delta p is equal to h upon 4 pi which in general means that delta x is inversely proportional to delta p delta x is inversely proportional to delta p and that uh, delta x all delta p values can never be zero okay these are the two conclusions that we can draw from this okay these are the two conclusions that we draw we can draw from this all right so i hope all of you remember this delta x delta p is equal to h upon 4 pi and uh, delta x is inversely proportional to delta p and another uh, sort of a complementary equation was given by someone can someone tell me what this equation tells us can someone tell me what this equation tells us hello shumona hello mahir mahir is saying momentum and position are not measured simultaneously they can be measured simultaneously but not accurately or not precisely okay they cannot be measured to infinite precision meaning if you try to measure the uh, position and momentum simultaneously you can do it but you will always get errors in both of them and the minimum value of the product of the errors is h upon 4 pi which means if this product had been zero then one of the values had minimum error zero error but this cannot be zero it has a finite value which means that there will be a certain error involved in both of them when you measure them simultaneously okay so heisenberg uncertainty principle doesn't say that you cannot measure them simultaneously it in fact tells us when you can measure them simultaneously to infinite precision meaning for zero errors all right yes absolutely correct very good lambda is equal to h upon p that is the de broglie equation very good nisha mahir leela chief of the god welcome welcome chief of the god and yes this is called as wave particle duality wherein lambda these are matter waves okay lambda is matter waves and p is momentum okay p is momentum or again more specifically linear momentum okay p is momentum or more specifically linear momentum okay so this is what we had learned in the last class and on top of that we also discuss something called as the free particle free particle what does the free particle tell us 
what does the free particle system tell us that <coughs> uh, the free particle system tells us that potential energy is zero meaning no force is being applied okay there is no force field the overall potential energy is zero and as a result of that and as a result of this what we find is that the wave function is actually some constant a multiplied by e raised to minus i plus or minus i k x all right where k is equal to 2 pi over lambda and the energy comes out to be k square h cross square upon 2 m k square h cross square upon 2 m that becomes the energy okay that becomes the energy lambda is the wavelength yes lambda is the wavelength but it is the wavelength of matter waves okay it is the wavelength of matter waves so it tells us that any object exists simultaneously as something that has momentum meaning a particle and as a wave which has a wavelength lambda all right so that is why this is called as wave particle duality and uh, this wave particle duality is seen in the free particle system because this particle has a wavelength this particle has a wavelength lambda okay this is the wavelength or you can say that these are matter waves okay these this is wavelength you can say that these are matter waves and the momentum actually comes out to be k h cross and which means again what you can say is this is a particle because there is a momentum this will be a particle like system because there is a momentum this will be a particle like system all right is this clear to all of you do you all of you remember this do all of you remember this now what did we say about the energies of free particles what did we say about the energies of free particles does any one of you remember this what the, what did we discuss about the energies of free particles what do you remember what did we discuss about the energies of free particle systems what did we discuss about the energies of the free particle system do you remember this do you remember this very good nisha very good absolutely correct nisha these energies are a continuum okay these energies are a continuum all right so shumona do you remember this shumona do you remember what a continuum means shumona can uh, do you remember what a continuum means do you remember what a continuum means So, Shumona, do you remember what a continuum means? Yes. Okay. Can you explain what a continuum is? Can someone tell me what a continuum is? All right. Sorry, it's not Shumona. It is Simona. Simona. I am so sorry for mispronouncing your name. I think it is Simona, right? Samir is asking, sir, I did my BSc in lockdown now doing my MSc. My basics are not clear, sir. What should I do? Answer is simple. You have subscribed to IFS Chemistry channel, all right? And we are right now in the Jazba 1.0 batch, which is a batch meant for students who have suffered during the lockdown, whose uh, whose basics have left, uh, whose ba basics are slightly behind, and which is why we are explaining everything right from scratch. Okay, we are explaining right from scratch, right from the basics. We are not going to go to advanced topics unless and until we understand our basics very well. All right. So, uh, Samir, the answer is very simple. IFS Chemistry is running a Jasba 1.0 batch, which is a batch which is a 100% discount. It is a complete YouTube batch. Okay, it's completely just a pure YouTube batch. And what it means is that you can, uh, you can study on YouTube with us for free and we are going to cover the most basic topics of CSR net, GATE and TIFR and BRC and SET exams. All right. So if you study with us, <coughs> I assure you that you will never feel that uh, the topics that are meant for the GATE exams or CSR net exams, they are tough topics. They are easy topics. 
you can definitely understand them very well so just all you have to do is follow us all you have to do is be regular here uh, maintain a certain discipline and so long as you are associated with us i assure you that you will not face difficulty in any of these topics okay you will start feeling that msc chemistry is a very simple topic cracking the csr net exam is not that tough it's easy so long as i am uh, i am uh, disciplined so long as i work hard so long as i am consistent okay so that is the most important point yes bireshwar you are most welcome bireshwar and samir all right so bsc in lockdown is never going to be a reason why you are left behind in fact this is something that you are going to use as your advantage you are going to become one of the best students one of the best chemists in the country all right and i assure you that all you have to do is just follow us be regular with us and keep watching our classes keep watching our lectures regularly do not miss even a single second of our lectures that's all that is necessary all right so simona was going to explain to us what energy continuum is all right and suppose in this direction energy increases what energy continuum means is that all of these energies are allowed but along with them all the energies in between are also allowed along with them all the energies that are in between these are also allowed meaning all energies are allowed all energies are allowed all energies are allowed and that's what continuum means that's what energy continuum means that is what energy continuum means okay that is what energy continuum means and you've seen this energy continuum somewhere okay there are some certain uh, diagrams that you have drawn and you have seen an energy continuum there uh can some of you tell me where you have seen this energy continuum we have actually seen this energy continuum somewhere in fact we have seen it in two different places can someone tell me where this energy continuum is can someone tell me where this energy continuum is and uh before we proceed before i give you the answer or before someone tells me in the comments uh so samir saying uh, thank you so much it means a lot really grateful yes you should just give your best and uh, in fact for students who want to prepare for the csir net exam in a very systematic way you want to target the upcoming csir net exam which is most likely going to happen in december as uh, as uh, csir nta has promised us <coughs> so if the exam happens in december uh, if you want to study in a very systematic way in a very structured way uh, our csir net course starts from this saturday which is the 22nd okay csir net course starts on the 22nd okay 22nd october is when the course starts just before diwali okay just before your diwali vacation start our course is going to start and there is a flat 70% discount on all courses all you have to do is you have to use the promo code itihas just use the promo code itihas itihas means history be a part of history okay uh, we are we at ifs are always aiming to create history we don't want to uh, just follow down someone else's footsteps we want to be the people who lead history and so if you want to be a part of this history if you want to create history with us you will realize that a 70% discount gives you an entire life course for 6 months at a price point of 7500 rupees and no one no one in the market is right now giving you this course at this particular price point all right i challenge you to show me one institute who is actually giving you all the features that we are giving a 6 month live course subscription at just 7500 rupees all right if you can show me all right i'll give you uh, the entire course for free so there is no such course we are creating history by making education most affordable for all students in india all right we want to not just reach india but we want to reach the world but we are starting with india one step at a time all right and uh, we want to ensure that no student in india no aspirant in india gets left behind every aspirant who 
uh, who uh, dreams of becoming a scientist, who dreams of becoming a teacher, who dreams of generating an entire new generation of chemists, of physicists, of scientists who far surpass anyone in the world and create history. All of you are invited to IFS to join us in creating history. All right. So uh, remember, there is a flat 70% off. And if anyone wants to enroll for the English medium batch, the English medium batch has already started on the 17th of October. Again, this is a premier batch. You will get recorded videos. You will get daily practice problems. Everything that you get in the live course. Uh, and <coughs> this will be a purely English medium batch. So this session that we are conducting right now, that session is a sort of a trailer for this batch. It's a demo video for this batch. And so anyone who wishes to join and prepare for CSR net gate set exams uh, should definitely enroll in this batch. You will get the most structured course. You will get the most structured preparation for each of these exams. Okay. Now back to our topic. What were we saying? We were saying that where do we see the energy continuum? All right. Uh, so Leela is saying in interference, no, in real electronic state. Very good, chief of the God. <coughs> Very good. So we get the energy continuum. We see the energy continuum in real electronic states. So I'm sure that all of you have seen a graph which looks like this. There is an energy here and there is an internuclear distance. There is an internuclear distance on the x-axis. And uh, I'm sure that all of you have seen a graph which looks like this. All of you have seen a graph that looks like this. And then, so this is an electronic level. Okay, this is an electronic energy level. This is an electronic energy level. Okay, this is an electronic energy level. And in this electronic energy level, you see vibrational energy levels. In this electronic energy level, you see vibrational energy levels. Okay, and you realize that as you reach a certain value, all of these vibrational energy levels are very close to each other. Okay, they start coming closer and closer to each other. And then there is a certain point, there is a certain point beyond which, there is a certain point beyond which you just see an energy continuum. There is a certain point beyond which you see an energy continuum. Okay, so this is the continuum. And why do you see this energy continuum? Why do you see this energy continuum? It's because any molecule which is in the ground vibrational state, when it is excited to the continuum, when it is excited to the continuum, this energy difference that you see is the dissociation energy. This energy difference that you see is the dissociation energy. Okay, this energy difference that you see is called as the dissociation energy. And <coughs> what it means is once, so this is a diatomic molecule. This diagram that we have drawn is of a diatomic molecule energy level. Okay, this is a diatomic molecule. It could be homonuclear, it could be heteronuclear. Uh, but this is a diatomic molecule and an electronic energy level or the ground state energy level of the diatomic molecule with various vibrational states. And when you excite this molecule from the ground vibrational state to the energy continuum, the molecule dissociates. And when the molecule dissociates, the two atoms are no more experiencing a force from each other. So here at this point, you have the two atoms separated by a certain distance. The two atoms are separated by a certain distance. And here, the two atoms have now broken free of each other. And these have now become free particles or free atoms. And which is why their energies now form a continuum. And this continuum energy is essentially kinetic energy. This continuum energy is essentially kinetic energy k square h cross square upon 2m. And this kinetic energy can take any possible value depending upon the velocity of each of these free particles. Okay. <coughs> All right. So Pratyusha is asking, sir, I enrolled for the recorded class for the second time, but uh, same classes are again in the app, but not updated. 
So of course, Pratyusha, what we have done is in the recorded batch, we have uploaded the best lectures, the best versions of each of the lectures. And the best version can't be improved because it's the best. Okay. Uh, if there was scope for improvement, I would have said that they were the better versions. We have already uploaded the best versions of each lecture of each topic. All right. And uh, also notice that chemistry hasn't changed for the last 50 years. So even if you enroll for the batch next year or three years from now, chemistry is going to remain the same. In fact, uh, if you look at the physical chemistry Atkins book, uh, the version that was there in 2009, something that I used when I was in college. All right. And the version that's there right now. The only difference that you'll see is that in the current version, there are prettier pictures. Okay. There are nicer diagrams, but the content is the same. All right. I find no improvement or no increase in the concepts mentioned in that book. So if in the last 15 years, Atkins, uh, Dr. Atkins couldn't find a way to improve physical chemistry uh, in six months, I'm sorry, chemistry doesn't change. And because we have updated, we have uploaded the best possible versions of each of the lectures. I'm sure that even if the lectures are same, you will not find even a single reason why you can, uh, you would find these lectures lacking of something. All right. <coughs> okay. So Pratyusha is saying now I am a government employee. So not able to attend live classes. So please help me. Uh, please need updated classes and messaged in the chat box, uh, chat box technical team not responded till now because of course that's what I'm telling you that uh, these lectures are the best quality lectures. You can continue watching these lectures for the next three years and you will still understand chemistry in the best possible way. Okay. This is a challenge that I'm giving you. Show me a better version of the lecture and we will create a better version. But I also am confident that there is no better version of these lectures. You are being taught in the best possible way. All right. So don't worry about whether these are updated or not. Just focus on the chemistry that is taught in those classes. And I'm sure that you won't have a single reason for complaint. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, right. So what was chief of the God saying uh, without vibrational states, real electronic states without vibrational states. Uh, in fact, even if vibrational states are there, that's also fine. You will see the continuum there as, as well. Okay, you will see the continuum there as well. Okay, so this is a free particle. This is a free particle. A free particle has an energy continuum. A free particle has an energy continuum. Now, in this class, we are going to study a particle in a box. We are going to study a particle in a box. Okay, we are going to study particle in a box systems. All right. Now, what is a particle in a box? First of all, what's a box? A box is simply something like, for example, you have seen a box. All right. Now, uh, especially because Diwali is close by, you are seeing a lot of boxes right now. You are seeing a lot of boxes right now. Right. You are seeing a lot of boxes right now because it's Diwali. And uh, it's a season of gifts. Okay, just like the gift that IFS is giving you, okay, of a flat 70% off, the entire course is available at less than 1000 rupees. Okay, the entire course is available at less than 1000 rupees. So, uh, you are actually seeing a lot of boxes like this in this particular Diwali season. One of the boxes is provided by IFS itself. All right. And what is the purpose of this box? What is the purpose of, his, of this box? Suppose... You put a ball inside this. Suppose you put a ball inside this. Okay. Suppose you put a ball inside this. This box is not spontaneously going to come out of the box. Anything that is put inside a box will remain inside the box. Okay. Anything that is put inside the box will remain inside the box. So what is a box? A box is something that once something goes inside the box, it remains inside the box. It does not come out of its own. That is simply a box. Okay. Do you understand what a box is? Of course, I'm not telling something new to you. Okay. This is essentially the definition of a box. All right. Box means once you put something inside the box, it will not come out. It is something to store uh, objects. Okay. Now, what is particle in a box? Why is this a quantum mechanical system? That we understand. It's a box. 
where you put something inside the, inside the box and it will not come out. That all of us understand. But what's a particle in a box? What do you mean by a particle in a box? Particle in a box means, suppose I am looking at a one dimensional case. Okay. Suppose I am looking at a one dimensional case. Imagine, imagine that, imagine that. Uh, imagine that you have a tray and this tray and this tray is filled with water okay this tray is filled with water imagine that you have a tray and this tray is filled with water okay there is a tray filled with water now what we are going to do is now what we are going to do is we are going to put we are going to put a wooden matchstick okay this is a wooden matchstick wooden matchstick okay and on that wooden matchstick is sitting a is sitting an ant okay there is an ant forgive my drawing of an ant i am sure that this doesn't look like an ant okay but let's assume that there is an ant here okay let's assume that there is an ant here okay it's a long matchstick so the ant can move on the matchstick it's a long matchstick so the ant can move along the matchstick okay the ant can go here the ant can go there okay the ant can move along the matchstick okay there is an ant here the ant can move along the matchstick okay but the ant can only move in two directions this direction and that direction the ant can only move in two directions this direction or that direction there is no other way there is no other direction in which the ant can move do you understand nice ant oh thank you so much leela thank you so much okay if you like the ant please send some love for the ant please send some hearts some fire for the ant okay if you like like this uh right don't worry pratyusha even if the live classes are going on the live classes uh, the same things are taught in the live classes okay so <laughs> be assured that we are not teaching different things in the live classes uh, in fact all the new faculties that join are also trained based on these recorded classes all right so they know they know exactly what to teach we know exactly what the formula is to ensure that all of our students qualify the csr net and we are not going to change the formula soon all right we are going to continue using the formula continuing continue using the method that we know everyone likes and everyone uh, everyone uh, utilizes to crack the jrf even in the first attempt often all right so don't worry don't worry okay so all of you like the ant okay all of you like the ant great that's great thank you so much thank you so much so now uh, but unfortunately this poor ant is uh, trapped on this matchstick the poor ant is trapped on this matchstick the ant cannot go outside the matchstick it can either go in that direction it can go in that direction okay so there is only one direction x axis you can say the ant can only travel on the x axis all right shalin is saying sir i think i am good at understanding the concepts but i can't make uh, these concepts useful to solve the problems okay shalin uh, the only way against this is practice but one thing that i can tell you is that uh, before you start practicing if you are facing a lot of difficulties in uh, the questions that you are practicing all you have to do is <coughs> all you have to do is watch some of our videos where we have actually solved questions once you see how these questions are supposed to be solved i am sure that you will understand how uh, uh, how further questions can be solved so even in this class we are going to solve a few practice questions you will understand i am confident that you will understand how to solve these questions okay particle move only in the horizontal direction but not just horizontal only in one of the horizontal directions there are two horizontal directions x and y but it can only move in the x direction it can move only in the x horizontal direction 
ओके ओके कांचन वाई आर यू अपोलॉजाइजिंग आई थिंक कांचन इज लेट दैट्स वाई शी इज अपोलॉजाइजिंग बट कांचन अनफॉर्चुनेटली योर अपोलॉजी इज नॉट गोइंग टू हेल्प एनी वन एंड इट्स नॉट इवन नेसेसरी राइट सो द लेक्चर द पार्ट ऑफ द लेक्चर दैट यू हैव मिस्ड यू कैन ऑलवेज वॉच इट लेटर सो योर अपोलॉजी इज नॉट नेसेसरी एब्सोल्युटली डोंट इवन वरी अबाउट इट आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट ऑल ऑफ यू हैव सम सम वर्क सम एंगेजमेंट एल्सवेयर एंड विच इज वाई यू माइट नॉट हैव बीन एबल टू जॉइन ऑन टाइम okay if there was no other reason and you were late okay fine i accept your apology you are supposed to say sorry but uh, uh, if you are busy elsewhere and weren't able to join and you just now joined that's actually a good thing because uh, i remember that when i was in uh, uh, when i was uh, in college uh, some of my teachers were extremely strict with me some of my teachers were extremely strict if you are even a minute late you are not allowed in the class the doors will be closed okay and i have learned from them in our offline classes i do the same thing you can ask uh, someone from the offline uh, classes that the doors are closed one minute after the class starts the doors are closed no one can get in all right but that never stopped me from actually going to the class late okay whenever i used to be late and i know that i i am not uh, someone different from you i am exactly like you i also didn't like getting up early so 9 uh, o'clock classes i used to stay uh, quite far away about uh, 12 kilometers from there so it took me 45 minutes to reach uh, the the uh, our classes and uh, i used to be often late because the buses get late or sometimes there is a huge traffic jam at that time and if i am 5 minutes late i would shamelessly knock on the door and actually go inside i would apologize to my teacher and my teacher used to understand that i am a sincere student i come from far away so of course sometimes i am late okay there were students who used to stay in the hostel uh, just next door and even they used to be late so my teacher used to allow me they they were confident that uh, uh, that uh, even if i come late i am there because i want to study because i want to learn so never apologize for wanting to learn if you are late you are late that's fine come and join all right yes particle move only horizontal okay okay all right how to get sub what do you mean by sub Shashi, what do you mean? How to how to subscribe for CSR Net coaching classes? Uh, Shashi, uh, <coughs> I'll give you a phone number. If you just contact that phone number, uh, they'll tell you. All you have to do is visit ifsonline.com. All you have to do is visit ifsonline.com, and you will find all details of how to subscribe the CSR Net app. Okay, just remember to use this promo code. Just remember to use this promo code. Itihas. last 3 days remain for a flat 70% discount on all our courses so hurry enroll today make your payment tonight and enroll now there's a flat 70% off uh, on the occasion of diwali and we want you to take full advantage of this not miss such a great opportunity that will be a once in a lifetime opportunity okay this is also the last year uh or uh, this is also the last offer of this year we are not going to give you any more offers this year so this is your last chance to get the uh, get access to the best educators in the country at the most affordable price and as i said uh to create history to join us in creating history all right okay all right so that is what a particle in a box is okay that is what a particle in a box is something that once it enters the box cannot leave very easily and how do we ensure this for a particle what we do this what we do for the particle is this is x equal to 0 this is x equal to a okay this is x equal to 0 x equal to a x equal to 0 and x equal to a okay here the potential is zero here the potential is zero but on that side potential is infinite and on this side potential is infinite okay potential is infinite do you understand what uh, we are seeing <coughs> so this is the one dimensional box in fact this is called as the one dimensional box with infinite potential barriers okay this is called as the one dimensional box with infinite potential barriers okay and uh, if you plot the potential 
if you actually plot the potential, the potential actually looks like this. And now this is going to start resembling a box. Okay, so the potential is infinite in those two, those two directions and inside the potential is zero. Inside the potential is zero and now this looks like a box. So if I put a particle inside this box, inside this box, if you put a particle inside this box, this particle is never going to leave the box. Okay, this particle is never going to leave the box. Okay. All right. Yes, Pratyusha is also right. Thank you so much, Pratyusha. Shashi, you can just uh, look at what Pratyusha has said. All you have to do is download the IFAS app. Okay, if you download the IFAS app and create a login there, you will see how automatically you will see how to register. Okay, hello Pramod, hello Pramod. Welcome to IFS. So Pramod, where are you from? Pramod, I think I am seeing for the first time. Pramod, where are you from? Pramod, where are you from? Where are you from, Pramod? Churu. Okay, where is Churu? I am not sure. I have never heard of this place before. So I am also learning new things here. I am learning new things about the geography of India. Where is Churu, Pramod? Where is Churu? So I, I can see a lot of people here. Nisha is from Kerala. Kanchan is I think from Haryana if I am not wrong. Oh, it's from Rajasthan. Okay. Hello. Hello, Pramod. Suraj is asking for only physical chemistry coaching. Only physical chemistry coaching is also available. You have a lecture series of physical chemistry. Okay, you have a lecture series of physical chemistry. However, it's in Hindi and English combined. Okay, notes are in English, but uh, the entire course is taught in Hindi. Okay. Oh, Kanchan is from Uttar Pradesh. Okay, Kanchan is from Uttar Pradesh. Okay, partial box uh, does not happen for liquid. What's a liquid partial box? Oh, you mean something that can only go in that direction, but not this. You can make such a box. Okay, you can make such boxes. Pramod has already taken IFS. Okay, Pramod, I have never seen you. Is it a recorded course? I have never seen you in the live course. Or maybe in, you are in the latest course in which I am yet to teach. Maybe that's why I have ne never met you. But of course, we will meet soon. If it's a live course, uh, we will meet soon. Don't worry. My lectures are going to happen soon in the live course also. Yes, Chief of the God, I already know. He is from Mathura. He is from UP. So we are having uh, students from all over India. We will get students from all over India. I think uh, a few days back there was someone, I think Shubhojit maybe. I don't remember his name exactly, but he was from uh, he was from West Bengal. He was from Kolkata. All right. So we have uh, from the east, from the north, from the west, uh, from Gujarat also. Hani is uh, someone who attends the classes regularly. Hani is not here. He is from Gujarat. And we also have someone from Kerala, which is the southernmost point of India. Yesterday, there was someone even from Jammu and Kashmir. So we have students from all over India. Very good. I am very happy to see this. Okay, because I always say that we have to reach every corner of India. We want to reach every corner of India. We want to take the best quality chemistry education to every corner of India. All right. And all of you are, I know that all of you are helping us by sharing the link of this video on WhatsApp or if you really like this lecture, I know that what you are doing is you are taking the link of this lecture and you are putting it on your WhatsApp status. Okay, so I thank you. First of all, let me uh, thank all of you uh, for sharing this lecture. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm really glad that all of you are liking these lectures and sharing them. Okay, so Nidhi is from Mumbai, Gokul Dham. Okay, yes, uh, Nidhi is right next door to us. So we are in Pune, Nidhi is from Mumbai. Okay, great, great. Yes, I know that Leela shares, uh, our, uh, shares our lectures, shares our videos. So I am really thankful to all of you from the bottom of my heart uh, for motivating me to continue taking these uh, sessions. All right. So let's uh, continue our discussion of a particle in a box. So a particle in a box is something that when it enters the box, it cannot leave e easily. And why can't it leave easily? Why can't the particle leave the box very easily? One of the reasons, why a simple way to understand this is the potential. So potential energy, potential energy is energy stored 
energy stored after work is done this is the energy stored after work is done okay so we always write v is equal to minus w we always write v is equal to minus w so what is potential energy energy that is stored in the system after a certain amount of work is done okay after a certain amount of work is done now look at this particular box okay for the particle to be inside the box no work has to be done because potential is zero for the particle to be inside the box no work has to be done because the potential energy of the particle is zero meaning zero work needs to be done to keep the particle inside the box okay zero work needs to be done to keep the particle inside the box but what about outside the box x less than zero or x greater than a what about then <coughs> what about such a situation so in this case what you will immediately realize is that to take the particle beyond x equal to a infinite amount of work needs to be done okay and of course it's impossible to do infinite amount of work in fact you will regularly find that uh, it becomes impossible for us even to do 10 minutes of work or 15 minutes of work okay and what we are talking about is infinite amount of work so uh, particles are just like us they are equally lazy so we don't like uh, to do even 10 minutes of work particles infinite work absolutely not infinite work is never going to be possible for a particle all right okay we all should be thankful to your ifas team yes absolutely uh, pratyusha no need to be thankful to us no need to be thankful to us in fact you are the people who are helping us reach every corner of india our main motto is uh, to make quality education available to each and every student for the most affordable prices okay of course we can't really give everything for free because um, there are running costs like for example this smart board it costs about 4 lakh rupees all right uh, there is an entire studio here that you can't see it costs a lot okay in order to stream this internet costs a lot in order to create an app which can provide uh, all such wonderful free material there is a lot of running cost there so unfortunately we are not at a point where we can give you everything for free so we have to bear costs for all of these things okay I, even i have to earn a living while doing this all right so at least the basic pay that i get that unfortunately we have to charge from you we are uh, not very happy that we have to charge it from you so which is why we are making our best effort to actually reach those students who can't afford even that all right so we are providing everything at the most affordable prices uh, and even an entire free course on youtube for students who won't be able to uh, you know enroll in our courses but unfortunately i mean what happens is uh, you'll realize that we uh, are already taking uh, lectures in the paid course for six hours eight hours sometimes uh, during the day and then we come here so it becomes really hard for us to also uh, you know uh, 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 you provide a lot of material for free but we are still doing our best okay we do not want even one student to be left behind and we'll ensure that i am sure that our efforts are going to reach each and every student and we are going to help uh, each and every student and i am sure that all of you are going to cooperate us cooperate with us for this by self preparation i got 44 marks in the feb exam after registered with ifs i got 75 marks so your marks almost doubled that's great that's great and you are getting confidence so your marks are less important for us your confidence is more important for us okay if you become more confident marks will follow marks you will get automatically okay no one needs if you have if you have enough confidence you won't even need to study you can just go and take the exam and you'll still qualify just like i did okay i was confident enough that i understand the basic concepts well and i just went and took the exam and i qualified for the first in my first attempt itself and that's the point that i want to take all of you to okay because the biggest problem that we face is not lack of chemistry knowledge chemistry knowledge is there google is helping us so much there was no google at our time but it's the lack of confidence okay uh, students don't feel confident that they have understood something and that's what we want to uh cure okay you are not able to register for the ifas app uh suraj uh, all you have to do is there is a registration link there just click on that link and you will be redirected 
but uh, if you can't register on the IFS app, you can visit our IFS online website. You can register there and sign in into uh, the app by using that login ID. Okay, so just go to our website, log in there or register there and use that login ID on the app and your app will start working. So don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Uh, potential energy also depends upon height. Akshay, absolutely correct. Potential energy also depends upon height. But here, what you will observe is that the particle can only move in one direction. There is no height direction. There is only X direction, which is why. So the potential energy that you are talking about, which depends on height, that is gravitational potential energy. Okay, that energy is gravitational potential energy. And that cannot be uh, <coughs> that is dependent upon the height from the surface of the earth. Okay, but here what we are talking about is not necessarily gravitational potential energy. It could be electrostatic potential energy. It could be magnetic potential energy. Okay, it could be any kind of potential energy. So that box, the box in which all your Diwali gifts are going to arrive, that box utilizes gravitational potential energy. But in actual molecules or in atoms or in real systems, this potential energy is usually an electrostatic potential energy. All right. Okay, Suraj, so if you have uh, some, if you are still facing trouble, I will give you a phone number. Just call on this number tomorrow, 917 Okay, just call on this number tomorrow. Just call us on this number tomorrow uh, after 10 o'clock and they will help you and they will help you out how to uh, register. Okay, just call on this particular number. 917-2266-888 and they will help you out uh, with your registration. Alright. Oh, so if your mobile number is already linked, use a different mobile number. Alright, if your mobile number is linked, you don't even need to register, you can just join, you can just log in. Okay, from you must have forgotten the ID. So click on the forgot ID uh, uh, link and then you will get everything. Okay, you can just call the technical team, even they can provide you the ID based on your phone number. Okay, so don't worry. Contact the technical team, they will help you out. Okay, so potential energy is energy stored after work is done. And because for the particle to go here, infinite amount of work will be required. The particle cannot go here. Okay, particles are as lazy as us. They don't want to do even finite amounts of work. So infinite amount of work, you can forget. The particle, once it goes inside, it realizes it does not have to do any work. Potential is zero, which means the particle is very happy. The, the particle is leading a very comfortable life there. Of course, the particle has, doesn't understand that uh, to lead not just a comfortable but an enjoyable life, the particle has to move out of the box. Okay, The particle has to move out of the comfort zone. And uh, we are going to help the particle move out of the comfort zone also. Let's see how. Okay, So now that we understand the system, Okay, I'll draw the system once again here. I'll draw the system once again here. This is an infinite box from 0 to A. V is 0 inside. And V is infinite everywhere else. V is infinite everywhere else. Now, wherever the potential is infinite, wherever the potential is infinite, wave function becomes 0. Okay, wave function becomes 0. All right. Because the potential is infinite, a particle cannot exist there. If a particle cannot exist there, the probability is zero. And if the probability is zero, okay, if the probability is zero, the wave function is also zero. Because the wave function is a measure of the probability. Okay, wave function is a measure of the probability. Okay, hello Chandani. Welcome to IFS. Welcome to our English version courses. Welcome to our English version of the CSR net course. Hello Chandani, welcome here. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Uh, Suraj, okay, as I've already told you, just contact our technical team, they will help you out. Okay, all right. So this is the particle in the box system. Potential is zero, uh, potential is infinite outside, wave function is zero outside. And now, and now, if you want to write the wave function inside, if you want to write the wave function inside, this is a box of length A. This is a box of length A. This wave function is given by root of 2 upon A sine of n pi x upon A. 
<coughs> okay the wave function is given by root of 2 upon a sine of n pi x upon a x is the x coordinate a is the length what is n n is 1 2 3 and so on this is a quantum number this is a quantum number okay this is a quantum number okay now this is a quantum number for the particle in a box system okay this is not the quantum number from hydrogen atom it is a similar quantum number it has a similar function so it's not the principal quantum number of the hydrogen atom it's the quantum number of the particle in a one dimensional box system okay it's a quantum number of a particle in a one dimensional box system okay all right yes this is the this is not the principal quantum number all right so leela you don't have to uh, you don't have to delete your comment it's okay it's okay the derivation uh, i'm not going to tell you the derivation i'll tell you where you can find the derivation okay i'll tell you where you can find the derivation if you want to see the derivation look for the book called levine this is a book on quantum chemistry this book will give you an entire derivation this book will give you an entire derivation okay and how do you derive this you use the schrodinger equation you use the schrodinger equation you use the schrodinger equation which is h psi equal to e psi you use the schrodinger equation h psi is equal to e psi and what is h h is something that you might know as the hamiltonian operator as the hamiltonian operator h is something that you will know is called as the hamiltonian operator okay now we are going to study operators later on don't worry I have not told you what operators are. I have told you briefly what wave functions are. We are going to study operators later on. Okay. But right now, just know that this is uh, how you derive it. Okay. H is minus H cross square by 2M del square plus V. V is 0. And uh, it's actually a linear second order differential equation. And uh, if you have learned differential equations, uh, in uh, typically, if you have maths in your BSc second year, in your BSc second year maths, there is a course on differential equations. If you know how to solve differential equations from there, even, the, uh, even then you can solve this. So I'll tell you what differential equation we are using. But before that, but before that, let me uh, tell you where you can practice questions for these. Okay, so I think someone was telling me that they understand the concepts very well, but they struggle while solving questions. They understand concepts very well, but they struggle while solving questions. This Physical Chemistry Concept Checkbook is one of the best books available in the market for physical chemistry questions. There are more than 3000 practice questions. There are more than 3000 practice questions that you can get in this book. And we are offering this book at a mega sale. It's a, uh, it's a price of 500 rupees only. Okay, this book uh, is normally priced at 795 rupees, but we are offering a big discount this book you are getting at 500 rupees okay so again two big opportunities are there uh, for you know taking your life from here to here okay <clears throat> if you enroll with ifs courses you are going to be a part of history you are going to be one of the best chemistry students in india and something that will also help you uh, and is a lifelong treasure for all of you is the physical chemistry concept checkbook okay this is the physical chemistry concept checkbook more than these are 3000 practice questions and there are seven or eight different entrance exams that you can target just based on this book there is a csr net exam gate exam tifr exam then you have brc exams set exams public service commission exams and so on all right so any exam that you want to target physical chemistry at the msc level this book is more than sufficient okay all right now what is the schrodinger equation what the equation that you have to solve is minus h cross square upon 2m d2 
डी एक्स टू ऑफ साय इज इक्वल टू ई साय ओके दिस इज द इक्वेशन दैट यू हैव टू सॉल्व एंड वाई डिड आई कॉल इट द लिनियर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन लिनियर सेकेंड ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन बिकॉज आई कैन री अरेंज दिस टू लुक लाइक डी टू बाई डी एक्स टू ऑफ साय एन इज इक्वल टू वेल नॉट इक्वल टू प्लस प्लस टू एम ई अपॉन एच क्रॉस स्क्वेयर प्लस टू एम ई अपॉन एच क्रॉस स्क्वेयर इज इक्वल टू टू एम ई अपॉन एच क्रॉस स्क्वेयर साई एन साई एन एंड दैट्स इक्वल टू जीरो ओके सो दिस इज अनियर लिनियर सेकेंड ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन यू माइट हैव सॉल्व दिस बाय यूजिंग something like this d2 y by dx2 plus k into y is equal to 0 or k square y is equal to 0 so there is a method which is called as the method of uh, uh, so you uh, you calculate an integrating factor and use the integrating factor to actually figure out what the answer is okay is this in ifs book set yes in the set of books the complete study material set the physical chemistry book is there okay the concept check book is there but if you want to purchase it separately it will cost you only 500 rupees it will not cost you more than that okay uh, pratyusha chief of the god is actually not an msc student he is actually a bsc student and uh, uh, which is why i always like to tell everyone that uh, good bsc students can also understand everything that goes on here all right yes then second differential absolutely absolutely so you differentiate for the first time the linear first order differential is very easy to calculate then you use an integrating factor and differentiate again or rather integrate again not differentiate integrate again and then solve you will get a wave function that looks like this okay of course there are other boundary conditions also so you will get a generalized solutions the generalized solution can be made into a particular solution if you remember the uh, differential equations uh, by applying boundary conditions which are at x equal to 0 psi should be 0 at x equal to a psi should be 0 when you do that that wave function so the wave function that comes out to be it's similar to the free particle wave function e raised to plus or minus i k x that can be reduced to something like this root of 2 pi 2 upon a sin of n pi x by a after applying the boundary conditions okay so there is a full method but i am not going to go into that i have given you a trailer of the method okay but if you want to read about this uh, go and look at at uh, go ahead look at ira levin Physi uh, quantum chemistry that's one of the best books and it will give you a detailed answer to your question okay it's uh, derived in detail there okay now so those were the wave functions okay let's plot these wave functions so let's say What is the ground state? Psi one is equal to root of two upon a sine of pi x upon a. Okay, here what we are doing is we are using n equal to one. Here what we are doing is we are using n equal to one. Okay, great. Nidhi has ordered it yesterday. Very good, very good, Nidhi. So you are, you are now going to be in a few days. You are going to get a box. which will be a lifelong treasure for you okay so uh, there is no better diwali gift than this so uh, this is going to be the one of the best books a sin kx plus b cos kx correct in fact there is an i into b cos kx also uh, i into a sin kx also all right so e raised to i kx is cos kx plus i sin kx okay that's uh, essentially going to be your wave function <coughs> okay all right all right so this is the wave function now let's plot this now let's plot this let's plot this wave function how does this wave function actually look like how does this wave function actually look like this wave function looks like this okay this is x equal to 0 this is x equal to a and beyond this the wave function is 0 beyond this the wave function is 0 and this part of the wave function is visible here okay so this is 
psi 1. This is psi 1. Okay, and there is a maximum, the wave function reaches a maximum value at x equal to a upon 2. Okay, the wave function reaches a maximum value at x equal to a upon 2. Okay, <coughs> now what does this mean? What does this mean? In fact, the wave function by itself doesn't mean much. But if we plot the graph of psi square, if we square it and plot it, if we square the wave function and plot it, what we are going to see is a graph that looks like this. Again, this point is a upon 2. This point is a upon 2. And if psi square, what does psi square stand for? Psi square stands for, psi square stands for probability density. Psi square stands for probability density. Okay. And uh, this value actually comes out to be the height of this is uh, 2 upon a. The height of this is 2 upon a. All right. What this probability density tells you is that the probability of finding the particle is highest. The probability of finding the particle is highest at the center of the box. The probability of finding the particle is highest at the center of the box. Okay, is this clear to all of you? The probability of finding the particle is highest at the center of the box. Is this clear to all of you? Is this clear to all of you? All right, so maximum probability is at the center of the box and this is what you will expect. Like for example, imagine that, uh, imagine that you are, imagine that you are sitting here. Imagine that you are sitting there and on both your sides, on both your sides, there is fire. Okay, on both sides, there is, there is fire. Okay, you are sitting in a corridor where there is fire on both sides. Okay, there is fire on both sides, just like the fire that you send me in the comment box, just like the fire that you always send me in the comment box, that fire, one fire is sitting here, the other fire is sitting there. Okay, there is a lot of fire here. Okay, there is a lot of fire here. Okay, you are sitting in a corridor and there is fire on both sides. You are sitting in a corridor and there is fire on both sides. Okay, yes, Leela has sent already the fire. I have taken some fire that Leela has sent me and I have put it here. And you are sitting right in the center of that corridor. Where do you prefer to sit? Do you prefer to sit here? Or do you prefer to sit there? Or do you prefer to sit in the center of the box? Okay, so the particle doesn't want to go to a position where the potential is infinite, where the particle has to do maximum amount of work. The particle wants to stay as far away from that point as possible. So the particle just goes and sits in the center. The particle just goes and sits in the center. <coughs> Without the modulus, can we write? Uh, technically, Nisha, in this case you can, but uh, we haven't discussed wave functions in detail. Wave functions are allowed to be complex in nature. Wave functions don't have to be real functions, they can also be complex functions. But Probability is a real number. Probability is a real number. To convert a complex function into a real number, you should actually take the modulus and square it rather than simply squaring the wave function. That's why the modulus is written here. Okay. Uh, for real wave functions, you don't need the modulus. But for a general wave function, you should have the modulus sign there. Okay. In fact, uh, this mod of psi square is not even the right way of writing it. What you should write is psi star into psi which is the product of the wave function and its complex conjugate. The wave function and its complex conjugate. Okay, that's the reason why we have written it like this. Got it? Okay, so now this is the ground state wave function. This is the ground state wave function. Now let's look at another wave function. The excited state wave function. What will this be? Root of 2 upon a sine of 2 pi x upon a. This will be sine of 2 pi x upon a. Okay. Now again, I'm not going to go into what this function actually tells you. But let's just plot the wave function. 
If you plot the wave function, the wave function looks something like this. The wave function looks something like this. Okay, again, this is x equal to 0, x equal to a. This point is a upon 2. This point is a upon 2. Here, we are plotting psi 2 against x. And now, we see something very interesting here. There is a node here. We see something very interesting here. There is a node here. Node is where, node is where psi is 0. Node is a point where the wave function psi is 0. Wave function psi is 0. So, when you are talking about a wave function for n equal to 2, you get one node. Okay, the graph is the same thing, n minus 1. Yes, number of nodes is n minus 1, correct. Graph is the same thing, I didn't understand. Haan, graph is slightly different. You will find that this graph suddenly goes like this. Okay, this graph is like the speed breakers, the speed bumps that are there on Indian roads. That graph is uh, how I wish the speed breakers were. Speed breakers are never smooth. Okay, speed breakers are like I go here and I suddenly bump. Okay, so the wave function has a bump. Wave function is like Indian speed breakers. Okay, but this graph is a much better speed breaker. It is smooth. So, uh, uh, my, I don't suffer from a lot of vibrations when I'm going on this speed breaker. Okay, so that's the difference between these two graphs. It's not one and the same. It's slightly different. And I'll explain why it is like that also a little later when we start talking about wave functions. Okay. All right. Now, how will the graph of the probability distribution look like? Probability density mod of psi 2 squared. How will this graph look like? Because it is being squared, square can never be negative. Square can never be negative. Meaning, this graph is going to look like this. This graph is now going to look like this. There is a node here at a upon 2. There is a node here at a upon 2. Is this clear to all of you? Is this clear to all of you? There is a node here at a upon 2. Is this clear to all of you? Okay, is this clear to all of you? Okay, great. So, which means that tells us a new formula, new thing. Number of nodes, number of nodes is equal to n minus 1. Number of nodes is equal to n minus 1. So, for example, if n is equal to 3, nodes are 2. Nodes are 2, meaning the graph is going to look like this. There will be three mountains in the graph because you have two nodes. Because you have two nodes, you will see three mountains. Okay, that is what this actually means. That is what this actually means. Is this clear to all of you? Is this clear to all of you? <coughs> okay, okay, great. So, this has two nodes. This has two nodes. Okay. All right. Now, can someone tell me what is the number of probability maxima? What is the number of probability maxima? Okay. Now, look at this. When we used n equal to 1, there was only one maximum there. So, we are looking at the psi square graph. We are not looking at the graph of the wave function. We are looking at the graph of psi square. So, when n equal to 1, there is one maximum. Okay. When n is equal to 2, there are 2 maxima. Okay. When n equal to 3, there are 3 maxima. Which means, number of probability maxima is simply n. Okay. Number of probability maxima is simply n. Okay. Is this clear? Is this clear to all of you? Is this clear to all of you? Okay, great. Correct. Kanchan, absolutely correct. Chief of the God, absolutely correct. Three maxima there. Very good, Nisha. Very good, Simona. Leela. Akshay. Very good, all of you. Okay, okay. Great. Great, all of you. All right. 
so this is number of nodes and number of probability maxima okay now let's look at the energy now let's look at the energy what was the energy like what was the energy en was equal to en will be equal to n square h square upon 8m a square okay n we already know what is n n is 1 2 3 and so on okay what is m m is mass of the particle m is mass of the particle a is the length of the box a is the length of the box and h is the planck's constant h is the planck's constant which will be 6.62 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule seconds okay so this is the energy of a particle in a one dimensional box this is the energy of a particle in a one dimensional box okay this is the energy of a particle in a one dimensional box all right okay is this clear is this clear to all of you is this clear to all of you <coughs> okay great now let's try writing the different energy levels let's try writing the different energy levels so what i'm going to do is for simplicity let h square upon m a square let h square upon 8 m a square let this be equal to e1 okay we know that the ground state energy this is actually the ground state energy okay what will e2 be equal to e2 be equal to so e1 ground state energy is h square upon 8 m a square what will e2 be a note here note here that in this particular formula the most important part that you will see is this this person right here is the most important part n square n square okay this is the most important part of that particular equation so if our if we are trying to find e2 meaning n equal to 2 so it will be 2 square times h square upon 8 m a square meaning 4 e1 e3 similarly will be 3 square into that which is 9 e1 e4 will be 4 square into that which is 16 e1 and so on and so on which means if you plot the energy levels if you plot the energy levels these energy levels actually keep going farther and farther away from each other so you have e1 4 e1 9 e1 16 e1 and 25 e1 okay and 25 e1 okay so you'll find that the spacing between these keeps on increasing this is 3 e1 that is 5 e1 that is 7 e1 that is 9 e1 <coughs> okay so the energy level spacing keeps on increasing the energy level spacing keeps on increasing okay these are the energies for particle in a one dimensional box these are the energies for particle in a one dimensional box okay and here the quantum numbers that we have written are n equal to 1 n equal to 2 n equal to 3 n equal to 4 n equal to 5 okay all right so now let's try solving a question okay but before we solve a question let me remind you last three days are left to avail the 70 percent discount flat 70 percent discount is there all courses are some of the courses for a nine month subscription are at less than 1000 rupees per month okay 1000 rupees is something that we spend on uh, parties if we make uh, two or three parties, if we go outside for two or three parties, 1,000 rupees are spent. So don't party for one month. 
and you can afford that entire course for that one month okay 70 percent discount is there on all csr net courses remember that the promo code is itihas promo code is itihas okay use this promo code itihas and get a flat 70 percent discount okay all right no hang on we still have one more point to cover we still have one more point to cover okay we want to solve a particular practice question let's try solving a question before we stop the question is if n equal to 4 to n equal to 5 transition n equal to 4 to n equal to 5 transition requires a frequency requires a frequency of 45 units uh, sorry 45 uh, hang on hang on just a second requires a frequency of 45 gigahertz n equal to 4 to n equal to 5 transition requires a frequency of 45 gigahertz in a one dimensional box then the transition then the transition from the transition from first excited state to second excited state will require will require dash gigahertz will require dash gigahertz this is the question that we want to solve and all of you are going to help me all of you are going to help me solve this so how do we solve this how do we solve this so delta e is equal to h nu delta e is equal to h nu all right and what is delta e 1 to 2 this was 3 e1 <coughs> delta e 1 to was 3 e1 okay delta e 2 3 was 5 e1 delta e 3 4 was 7 e1 and delta e 4 5 was 9 e1 okay these values are given to you these values we have already seen here okay we have already seen these values here 3 e1 5 e1 7 e1 9 e1 okay so we have already seen these values that's exactly what i have written here okay now where do i write the 45 gigahertz where should i write 45 gigahertz so chief of the god is saying 55 h or 55 gigahertz okay notice that it is a transition from 4 to 5 it is a transition from 4 to 5 meaning this transition happens at 45 gigahertz this transition happens at 45 gigahertz okay this transition happens at 45 gigahertz what they are asking is first excited state to second excited state so what are the n values what is the quantum number what are the quantum numbers of the first excited state and second excited state can someone tell me what are the quantum numbers of the first excited state and second excited state can someone tell me ritu is saying 15 okay let's check let's check ritu 3 even okay what are the n values here first excited state second excited state what are the quantum numbers just tell me yes these quantum numbers are 2 and 3 very good nisha these quantum numbers are 2 and 3 remember i am not saying ground state and first excited state this is the ground state to first excited state 
what we want to do is we want to calculate this value we want to calculate this value and now the answer is very simple nine bananas nine bananas cost 45 rupees so five bananas are going to cost how much and you already have the answer simple nine bananas cost 45 rupees so five bananas cost how many five bananas cost how much yes very good 25 gigahertz and that is your answer very good all of you 25 gigahertz and that is your answer very good very good very good so have all of you understood this concept have all of you understood how we solve this question have all of you understood how we solve this question and the reason why we can solve this question like this is because you can see here the delta e is proportional to the frequency delta e is proportional to the frequency okay delta e is proportional to the frequency okay is this clear to all of you is this clear to all of you okay then okay then great <coughs> so let's stop today's session here let's stop today's session here uh, and we will continue tomorrow with another session of quantum chemistry and english version of the quantum chemistry course and uh, tomorrow what we are going to discuss is a particle in a two dimensional and three dimensional boxes so what we have discussed is the one dimensional box now we are going to discuss two dimensional and three dimensional boxes all right is this clear to all of you is this clear to all of you okay then so let's stop here let me remind you last three days are remaining itihas is the promo code flat 70 percent off on all csr net courses enroll today don't wait for tomorrow enroll today okay so on that note i'll uh, i'll take your permission with your permission i'll uh, stop this session have a very good night and happy learning